Hello, I would like to welcome all viewers to my presentation on Escape 30. My name is Maximilian Segler and I'm a PhD student in the Process Dynamics and Operations Group led by Sebastian Engel at TU Dortmund University. The topic of my talk is the reliable modeling of twin square extruders by integrating the backflow cell methodology into a mechanistic model. So first of all, let me motivate my talk. Twin screw extruders are widely applied in the fields of polymer processing. There they are used in order to process uh, poly solid polymer flakes in order to use them in other machinery and to give them new forms, for example, by injection molding. So the first advantage of the twin screw extruder is that it's possible able to melt solids. Furthermore, it's suitable to process very, very viscous media such as polymers with a high molecular weight. It offers as well a high flexibility. In the case of reactive extrusion, it can be seen as a modular reactor. Different modules in this modular reactor can be seen here at the bottom of the slide. For example, solid, solid flakes can be uh, directly fed into the reactor and future processed, which is a big advantage over other reactor concepts, as well as liquid side feeds at any position are possible, a gas removal, for example, if within a chemical reaction uh, gas was generated, it can be removed along the length of the extruder. Furthermore, the extruder involves certain specialized zones, for example, the melting zones, where elements transporting a high shear stress to the, to the material in order to melt the polymer flakes, as well well as mixing zones are existing, which are promoting the axial mixing by uh, moving the material in both directions, as well as it is possible to perform entire chemical reactions within the twin square extruder. And in the end, the product can be shaped by using the dye and future uh, processing steps. Due to its high flexibility, it has as well a very high modeling effort this is because uh, there is various very strongly interacted and coupled uh, states such as the, all the internal flows as well as the temperature which is coupled with the flows again over the viscosity. As you already saw in the short motivation examples, the residence time distribution of such an extruder is very very important for us especially in the case of reactive extrusion. The classical description of uh, residence time distribution is a cascade of CSDRs. In this cascade of CSDRs, by increasing the number of uh, CSDRs in series, the residence time distribution becomes more narrow. The drawback is that this residence time distribution of an extruder does not follow the residence time distribution of a CSTR cascade, but shows some tailing here. So this region here cannot be described with the residence time distribution of a CSTR cascade. This tailing is happening because of internal backflows. So at this point, let me outline my talk. So I've already started with a short motivation why the residence time distribution of a twin screw extruder is important to us and why there needs to be some work done in order to improve it. Then I'm going to start by describing the used twin screw extruder model. Before I'm coming to the backflow cell model methodology, which we are integrating in order to parameterize the internal flows of this twin screw extruder model. Then this combination I'm showing within the application step Afterwards, I'm going to show some results of this application and I'm going, going to conclude my talk and give a short outlook at the end. So the used twin screw extruder model by us was originally developed by Andreas Eitzelmeier in 2014. It's a one-dimensional model which is describing the changes of the states along the, uh, from the feeder towards the dye. It is discretizing the extruder length into finite volumina, and for all those finite volumina, as we are going to see on the next slide, mass and energy balances are being, being solved. The 
complexity of this model is very high because there is a various numbers of highly coupled states. The big drawback of this model though concerning uh, residence time distributions is that the RTD itself depends on the discretization lengths. So let me go more detail into detail in this model. So for all finite volume runners, the filling ratio is being uh, solved. That means depending on the position of this finite volume runner, it's either completely filled or not. Uh, it is being determined by the number of inflows and the number of outflows, what the actual volumina is. In case of a fully filled volume, the derivative of the filling ratio is set to zero and some pressure new pressure terms are occurring because if the volume element is completely filled, some pressure is being built up. The internal flows forwards and backwards are proportional to the filling ratio of the individual elements, the rotation speed, the diameter to the power of three, and the important forward conveying capacity Kf and Kb, which are going to become more important in the following slides. The internal pressure and use flows can be described as uh, pr pressure capacity of a mod module times uh, diameter to the power of four, divided by the viscosity, which is obviously a function of the current melt temperature in this element, by the pressure difference over the discretization lengths. Um, following as well, we could solve as well the differential uh, weight fraction balance for each element if we have multiple components and we need to look into the differential temperature balance. But for the sake of simplicity at this point, where we are focusing on the internal flows within the model, this one is left out. So the normal simplification that was performed by Eitzelmeier is that for each screw element, only one com main conveying direction is being considered. Therefore, either this one, one of those uh, two flows is being set to zero by the choice of the parameters Kf and Kb. This then leads to a very, very narrow residence time distribution, which is basically, which can be base, can be basically described as a CSTR cascade, which is going to be in the following our reference residence time distribution and our benchmark. So for, for example, mixing elements that we were considering, this does not hold true anymore because if you see one of those elements here depicted, there's a flow in, in the main direction and some back flows. So we were thinking about using the information of both flows and we were considering Kf and Kb at the same time. But then the question comes up how to uh, fit Kf and Kb or how to choose Kf and Kb wisely. And our idea was to use the residence time information of, of these uh, models. So we would do a parametrization using the residence time distribution of those individual elements. Because, by, because this residence time distribution describes us how much flow we have forward and backwards. And we were then looking into the literature and we found the according uh, residence time distribution model, which is a backflow cell model, which was initially developed by Römer in 1967. This model has two parameters, which is the first one, the backflow ratio, which is nothing else than the portion of the backflow in relation to the overall forward conveying flow. The second um, parameter is the number of cells n, which is here is the number of reactors that are considered. It shows, especially for overall, for entire extruder residence time distributions, equal prediction qualities as, as an axial dispersion model. But since we have now the description of a flow that is forward in relation to a flow that is backwards for a certain number of elements, 
we were thinking about applying this information and using the fitting on this model in order to get the information of the ratio of the two flows that we are looking in, for example, mixing elements. So now we are applying this model. So first of all, we needed some uh, experimental data, which is just showing the residence time distribution of our in investigated screw type. This data was first of all normalized, non-dimensionalized, and it was transformed into 100 equidistant uh, points. The number of CSTRs that was chosen for the um, backflow cell model was calculated by dividing the length of the experimental measured uh, residence time distribution screw setup, which was physically present for those experiments, by the by the discretization length delta x of our model. Then we were able to achieve and acquire our backflow ratio sigma b of our backflow cell model by solving the minimization problem of the experimental residence time distribution to our theoretical residence time distribution, which is originating from the backflow cell model with a certain sigma b. This optimization was performed with the solver fmincon. After achieving and gaining the information of n and sigma b, we were able to retranslate our sigma b into the internal flows within our extruder model by, um, by introducing a new backwards um, flow capacity, kb dash, which is in relation to the overall forward conveying capacity, and in order to, to maintain the overall flow into one direction, we had to introduce uh, forward, the new forward conveying capacity, kf, as well as kf minus kb dash. So by that, we were now able to describe um, a certain element with both the forward flow and the backward flow. And this parametrization is now possible for all different screw types. Here we see that we are just replacing the internal flows with our uh, new found uh, constants. This enables us in that we can use the residence time distribution information in order to better describe our, um, our internal flows in the model. So the investigated elements that we then took for, the, for this uh, case study was uh, two mixing elements, which are conveying elements which have little T's on the edge here, then screw mixing elements, which are regular conveying elements with parts milled out at the edges, which are allowing some backflow. Turbine mixing elements, which have turbine shaped uh, elements here, followed by hollow sleeves, as well as kneading blocks, which are um, disks staggered with such different staggering annuals. The references were for the first three elements uh, from a paper from Brouwer in 2002, and the kneading block information from Puleskin in 2003. So coming now to the results of the optimization. So first of all, let us start with the reference case. First one is shown here in uh, blue and green. This, those are the extreme cases of the backflow cell model, which are valid for the number of CSTR of 10 and 20. With an increasing number of CSTRs, we are getting a more narrow residence time distribution. If we are now introducing a backflow ratio, um, we are getting a more tailing residence time distribution. For blue with a slightly higher uh, backflow, we are getting a little bit more tailing than with red, which has a little bit less tailing. We are now able to describe especially the residence time distributions and the tailing, which is marked here in red. We see as well now that we have plotted all the experimental data results for all the various uh, screw elements 
and we should see a very good improvement, especially in the region here, starting from one and a half to two and a half mean residence times. Putting now those results into numbers, we see that for screw mixing elements, we have a great improvement by almost vanishing our error to the CSTR cascade, with, which was our declared reference from the original model. For turbine mixing elements, we almost showed no improvement. For tooth mixing elements, we're showing a little bit improvement. This is because a little portion of the flow can pass via the teeth. For kneading blocks with 60% staggering angle, we were able to uh, about half our uh, prediction error by a backflow of about 0 0.25. For 30% staggering angle, we were not able to improve our description of the residence time distribution. And for the negative 30 degrees and negative 60 degrees staggering angles, we were able to reduce the prediction error by 75% at a backflow ratio of about 0.5. So I'm coming now to a conclusion and an outlook. By applying this methodology, we were able to improve the residence time distribution prediction for various screw elements. Now it is possible to characterize efficiently all the backflows and forward flows within a certain screw element type in order to use that information within the model. By this parameterization of all different screw elements, we are now able to access and describe even complex processes like uh, mixing, kneading and melting efficiently. For example, here you can see now that we can just incorporate within our model the regular conveying elements together with some mixing elements and some kneading blocks within the same modeling methodology. Future activities planned is implementation of a reactive case study by using this new uh, screw elements in order to promote the mixing for the chemical reaction. Furthermore, since it is now po possible to characterize and to describe all various um, screw elements, not just the standard conveying elements, uh, the optimization of an entire screw setup, for example, for the energy efficiency or the throughput of an extruder is now possible and planned using metaheuristics. And the final goal would be to apply this methodology to answer model itself in order to control the entire process. With this, I would like to acknowledge the European Union for the funding that I'm receiving within the EU project Simplify. I would like to thank you all for listening and I'm looking forward for a fruitful discussion.